Hello, everybody, and welcome back to uh, the Pisces Twin Podcast. Uh, for those of you who are new here, I am Amy. I'm Ciara. And today we're going to do part two of our Love Spell um, podcast. It's been a while since <laughs> we were able to get this recorded because Ciara basically had the plague. So, mm. um, uh, you know, she wasn't really up to recording and talking because she sounded like ass, basically. I was basically asleep for almost 24 hours. Yeah, exactly. So for all you out there who are going out in public and stuff a lot, please take care of yourself and make sure you're washing your hands. And honestly, I don't get why people in, in the United States do not wear masks when they go out in public like they do in Asia because, let's face it, that's not a dumb thing to do. <laughs> It's really smart, actually, because then, you know, you keep other people from being sick if you are sick, um, and you also protect yourself from getting sick. So anyway, that's enough of my PSA. So we left off. So I'm going to be reading some more stuff from the Magical Charms, Potions, and Secrets for Love, the largest collection of its specified types of occult curioso to be found anywhere by C.A. Nagel. And, um, you know, it has stuff from all over the world and like historical stuff um, that has been gathered. That's what I'm going to be reading from. And Ciara, um... I'll be finishing up the fairy magic book that I was reading in last time. That has spells, potions, and lore from the Earth Spirits by Sharona Knight. And so there's just a couple more in here that I'm going to read off. And then I'll also be reading probably from some other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, excuse me while I drink my amino acids here. So also I have some stuff about like um, different incenses and oils and stuff as well. So let's see how far we can get today with this. Um, and, you know, if anybody has any questions about um, what we're reading from or questions about love spells or whatever, um, as we have stated before in the part one of this, you know, we're not gung-ho to do love spells on other people because why? You know, don't you want somebody to like you for you and <laughs> not try to like force your will on somebody? That's just stupid because it's not genuine and it's going to backfire in your face. What you can do, though, is to do things, um, spells for yourself to improve yourself, like your, you know, self-love, self-worth, your, you know, work on, you know, being strong, healthy, you know, taking care of your skin, etc. Stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with doing that because that's just self-improvement stuff. And that's just going to, and like, you know, stuff to be strong in like how you behave. Because let's face it, you can be the most beautiful person in the world. If you open your mouth and you're a fucking bitch, no one's going to like you. You become instantly ugly. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway. Go ahead, CR. You can start tonight. <laughs> so jumping back into this, we're going to be starting off reading the Blessed Fay Picnic. So <laughs> there is nothing quite so romantic as a picnic out in a secluded spot in nature with your lover. Are you mm -hmm. naked? Are you I'm naked? I'm sure. <laughs> uh, as long as you're nude, I'm in. <laughs> spending time together, just the two of you in a natural setting, inspires romantic interludes and sweet, <laughs> loving memories. <laughs> I'm sure it does. I have been there, done that. Uh, oh, excuse me, sorry. Sitting back under the blue sky on a sunny day with the one you you love can be pure bliss far away from daily hassles and stress in nature love and romance are always more exciting and enchanting and food always seems to taste better <laughs> amongst other things <laughs> seriously wait before you go any further i'm very curious how many people have uh, had that experience outdoors comment below i'm curious to see how brave people are <laughs> Uh, have this fairy love picnic on a Friday with your lover. And again, if a lot of you follow my uh, my uh, YouTube channel, I've talked about this in some of my recent... Friday is Venus, and yeah, it's also... It's, it's Freya. Mm -hmm. Freya. And it's good for love-related things anyway. But anyway, so Friday with your lover to share a few romantic hours together and to bless and sweeten your love life with a little fairy magic. So what you'll need is fresh flowers, honeysuckle oil, a picnic lunch, a blanket. 
So step one, on a sunny afternoon, gather together your picnic lunch, including plenty of love foods such as strawberries, apples, pears, oranges, peaches, and grapes. A couple <laughs> of bottles. Shortcake. <laughs> a couple of bottles of water. A bottle of chilled sparkling cider or champagne, a blanket and your beloved, and head out into nature for a picnic. Find a nice secluded spot. Uh, two. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just dying on this one. I I'm know. just like perverted thoughts running through my head like Exactly. Crazy. <laughs> uh, before you spread out your blanket and begin eating, draw a fairy ring and scatter the fresh flowers clockwise around it. <clears throat> then spread out your blanket inside the fairy ring. Anoint each other with the honeysuckle oil on the third eye to promote spiritual love. And as you do so, say, Star Spun Fay of the North, East, South, and West, may our love be divinely blessed, so be it. Three, now unpack your picnic and eat it, savoring each bite and each sip. Toast to one another, to the love you share, and to a loving day and tomorrow together. Step four, stay until the sunset, talking with each other, embracing, kissing, and holding each other. Yeah, uh uh-huh. Use Uh your imagination. (laughs) Share as much as you can. Share as much as you can. (laughs) Uh, Building a magical bond that unites your bodies, (laughs) minds, and souls. Five, before you leave your picnic spot, drip six uh, drops of the honeysuckle oil inside the fairy ring as an offering to the nature fairies and say, Star Spun Fay of the North, East, South, and West. That's really funny because they, I just noticed the little uh, spelling thing they did right there. Uh, Anyway, South and West, thank you for your blessings, blessed be. And step six is then pick up the flowers from your fairy ring and toss them here and there. Pick up all of your trash and leave the picnic spot as undisturbed and natural as possible. I'm sorry, I'm just like totally like thinking about like hot nude fey men okay when you're like (laughs) reading that it's so bad holy shit with black hair (laughs) i think i wait i just posted one literally in my instagram stories that's so fucking funny maybe that's why i'm thinking that (laughs) so that's that one wow that was juicy i like that one Mm -hmm. i'd be trying that one holy shit okay all right let me put my uh aminos down here because the shaker bottle was freaking dirty so i had to use a cup (laughs) all right um this one is a fun one okay this is what will your future husband be and everybody freaking like i swear to god i get this you know this is like a hot topic for a lot of people i think yeah it is for a lot of women anyway um If you have not met the man of your choice and wonder what occupation he will be following when he does appear, try the following. Grind to powder a nutmeg, a hazelnut, and a walnut and mix them together. The magic walnut. Magic walnut. (laughs) The wooden pickle. (laughs) God damn. (laughs) Okay, anyway. Add butter and sugar and form into small pills. Take nine of these pills upon retiring, and it is said that you will dream of your future mate and his work. Just don't do this if you have a nut allergy. No shit. (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit. Okay, anyway. (laughs) You know, you just got to wonder, where the fuck do they come up with this shit? You know what I mean? I don't know. Here, let me take a bunch of freaking nuts, grind them together. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> and then fucking eat them with butter into pills. Well, it's like, isn't there like some kind of, uh, I don't know if it's really a wives' tale, but if you eat too much nutmeg, it gets you fucking high. So, of course, you're going to have funky ass dreams. Yeah, that's I mean, true. <laughs> whatever. Anyway. Okay. You got, what are you up? Oh, uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> Like, this is so fucking goofy. So, uh, the next one I have here is pansy honey magic. Pansy honey? Pansy. What the fuck is this shit? Remember, pansy was one of the flowers listed in our last podcast, and it's, um, it's like a favorite of Oberon. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. So, the root word of pansy stems from the French, uh, pensy. 
th- uh, meaning thought, because it was believed that pansies could be used to make your beloved think of you and vice versa. You can use the love power of pansies in this pansy honey to encourage thoughts of love and desires. The flowers are edible and high in vitamin C and A. Make the honey on a Friday on or Once close again. to a new moon. Wow. Be sure to use the honey uh, up within 30 days uh, for the best results. So what you'll need is a half a cup of fresh, finely chopped pansy petals, a bowl, a jar of honey, and a pot of warm water. So step one, first warm the jar of honey by putting it in a pot of warm water for a few minutes. Put the petals in the bowl and use your fingers to mix them for a few minutes. As you do this, empower the petals by chanting. I empower these petals with thoughts of loving harmony. Add the empowered petals to the jar of honey. Hold the jar of honey between your hands and say, I empower this honey with the thoughts of loving harmony. Put the jar in a pot of warm water and slowly simmer for about 30 minutes and then allow the honey to cool. Store the pansy honey for about two weeks to strengthen its flavor and magical power. Make a cup of tea and add three teaspoons of the pansy honey. As you stir the honey into the tea, say, I call upon the flower fairies, bring thoughts of loving harmony. Sweet fay honey of romance and beauty, bring sweet love with each new day. Then go outside and make an offering of the pansy honey to the flower fairies. Drip nine drops of honey on the ground outside near the entrance of your home and say, I thank the helpful flower fairies for their thoughts of loving harmony. Sweet fay honey of romance and beauty bring sweet love with each new day Hmm. there you go that's cute it is cute um you know it's like you can't go wrong with doing stuff like that i mean it's yummy (laughs) to begin with but it's like i mean it's kind of handy anyway so in this book here i have a 17th century seal of love called the fourth seal And the seal was usually drawn on parchment using red ink or engraved on silver or gold. It was carried on the person in the belief that it would draw love and affection to its bearer. In addition to love and affection, this seal also offered the power to defeat one's enemies. So instead of sitting here and reading all this stuff that's in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a photo of it and I will put it in my Instagram um, highlights for the the, under the podcast stuff because I put podcast extras I think is what I call the highlight I believe Um, and I'll just put it in there but it it, you know basically you are naming off and conjuring up a bunch of freaking angels and stuff in this so um, yeah I'm going to take a photo and then you can see what the seal looks like and stuff and I'll just put it in there because it's just easier on me to do that than sit here and read the whole thing but to continue on, what I do have here is, that I'll read for you guys, is using the pendulum for asking questions about love. Because a lot of people, um, I mean, who I'm curious as to how many of you out there have a pendulum and use it. Um, I do not have one, actually. I have two But now. Ciara <laughs> has two of them. And she's used them. Um, we have to do it on you. We haven't done it in a while. But she yeah. uses them on me to, like, check to see how... Um, the energy chakras. of how my chakras are flowing, which it probably needs to be done soon. Well, you're like, doing it on me first. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. So um, anyway, so this is how to ask questions about love. Most people associate the pendulum with a clock. However, unknown to most is the fascinating use of the pendulum to answer questions. The method is simple and the results are quickly achieved and most intriguing. Some say the pendulum moves according to... Uh, to What? The pendulum moves according to dictates of the subconscious. Others claim its actions are due to occult forces. Whatever the reason, its action can be most startling. To get the feel of a pendulum, first ask questions you know the answers to and observe how the pendulum responds. Then proceed on to others. Properly uh, thought out and using the process of elimination, most questions can be answered with yes or no. Obtain or make a pendulum. There are numerous commercial models that are uh, very fine quality. And I mean, seriously, you guys, you can get them freaking anywhere now, it seems yeah. like. You know, all different kinds of crystals or gemstones or, or metals, whatever. They have them everywhere. Or you can, or you can make your own. It's really easy. Uh, if you choose to make your own, then get some object that can be tied to a thin string or thread or fastened to a fine link chain. A ring can be used or a brass 
rounded or pointed weight. In Haiti, the Queen Elizabeth root is used. This root can be obtained from herb suppliers. On a piece of paper, draw a straight cross. At the left of the horizontal line, write yes. To the right of the horizontal line, write yes. At the top and bottom of the vertical line, write no. Make this cross about six inches long for each line. Now sit directly in front of this chart and with your elbow on the table, hold the cord or chain so that the pendulum hangs over the intersection of the two lines. It should be about an inch or two above the chart. Concentrate on your love question and stare at the intersecting spot. Do not move your hand. Soon the pendulum will start to move. It will swing wider and wider in a straight line. Or sometimes it goes in circles. It mm-hmm. does all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you you just have to you learn have to get how a, yours yeah, does it. Yeah, exactly. And you can like you, some people I've seen like in old like movies and shit. They they've sit there and they like use a wedding ring. They'll take somebody's wedding ring and they'll tie it to a string or a chain yep. and then they'll they'll use that. Um, stop concentrating on your question and command the pendulum to stop. Slowly it will come to a stop. Ask another question and it will start swinging again. Which directions it swings is the answer to your question. Be sure your pendulum is well balanced. If you cannot make one properly, buy a commercial model as they are well fashioned and quite low priced. Hmm. So there you go. I mean, I I mean, you can use a pendulum for anything. You can write a bunch of different, you can have different charts that you lay down and have different like answers. You know, you can do like, I've seen people do with eye color, hair color, I need to make some like that. Different locations, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. You know, a pendulum has been around for ever, okay? So it's not some unique thing that somebody just invented. No, it isn't. (laughs) Clearly, it's been around for, you know, centuries, okay? So anyway, go on. So next up, I got strawberry love offering. Strawberry. The strawberry represents (laughs) passion, rewards, special gifts, and temptation. It's used to invoke love as an ingredient in love potions. It's good in spells of enticement, and the strawberry is a good gift to the fairies. Make this offering on a Friday. <laughs> so you'll need nine fresh strawberries, strawberry-scented votive candle. Take the strawberries outdoors with you. Draw a fairy ring in circle and call in the fairy guardians. Two, cup the strawberries in your hands and empower them by saying three times, may these strawberries be divinely blessed with the loving gifts of the fairies from north, east, south, and west. Now eat four of the strawberries, one at the north point of your fairy circle, one at the east point, one at the south point, and one at the west point. Place the other five strawberries on the ground around your circle at the north, east, south, west, and center points as an offering to the fairies. Stand at the center of the circle and say, I offer these sweet berries to the helpful and generous fairies from north, east, south, and west. In the name of the shining fae, may my love be divinely blessed. Bid farewell to the fairy guardians and pull up your circle. Leave the strawberries where they are. Go back indoors and light the candle. Dedicate it to the helpful fairies. As you gaze into the candlelight, imagine the helpful fairies bringing you more sweet and shining love every day and night. Allow the candle to burn safely down. And that's that. Well, I have to I have to make a comment about something. So for those of you who are doing spells and stuff, you really should leave offerings. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now let me tell you something. We do this all the time. And it's fucking fascinating. Because when you leave the offering, you turn, you walk away, and you do not look back. Okay? You, you leave it someplace like in the woods or wherever you leave it. Okay? And, you know, when we're leaving an offering, we're leaving food. Okay? We, we usually leave food out mm-hmm. or like food and flowers or whatever. You know? We never leave anything that's like environmentally, you know, bad or, you know, not or would hurt an animal or anything like that. But what's fascinating is whenever we do this, it disappears like completely. Like there is no evidence of, I I swear to God, I don't know what happens to it. (laughs) It's so weird because I mean, I've been around, I've been in nature enough to know and you can see the telltale signs where there's been an animal. Um, You can see the tracks, you can see them digging stuff up like outside in front here. I mean, it's real damn obvious that there's been squirrels digging, okay? Because, I mean, they leave marks. I can see deer track all over the place. I mean, I know what to to look for. 
But what's really fascinating was whenever we do this, we leave different things, like different times. We've left kiwi fruits. We've left mm. apples. We've oranges. left oranges, lemons. I mean, we've left all different kinds of shit. Well, not lemons. We never left lemons. No, we, we never left no. lemons. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you getting lemons from? No, it, was, it wasn't lemons. Sorry, it was tangerines. Yeah, we left orange. little clementines. Um, we've left different, different, you know, things at different times. And every time we do, it's totally gone. And there's like no evidence. That's the part that trips me out is like, you know, I'm like waiting to see, oh, a raccoon got it or, you know, maybe a deer came along and ate it. But there's never anything disturbed, which is so effing weird. And it's kind of, I mean, I don't know what crafty little creature is taking the stuff away, mm. but I mean, there's like literally no like remnants left behind. Like, like usually when squirrels take stuff they nibble on it. They're assholes. All right. They'll nibble on it and then they throw it away. You know, they're very wasteful. Like they steal tomatoes. They'll take two bites, chuck it down on the ground. Then they'll go and they'll take another one off the vine, take two bites and then chuck it on the ground. They're shits. Okay. Squirrels are, are the worst when it comes to your garden. They will, will fuck it up. <laughs> they're cute. They're fuzzy, but they're bastards. It's like, if you're going to take it, eat the whole goddamn thing. Don't waste food. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. But it's just, it's fascinating. What, watch what happens when you leave stuff out and see like what kind of evidence of animals or creatures that comes along and takes it because I still can't figure out. And we, where we leave the offerings, it's open land, like where we leave it, like right at the edge of our property, there's open space. It's RPA land, which is protected. Um, so who knows? It's kind of fucking cool to, to know that. So anyway, moving right along. Aquamarine. This is a good luck charm for a happy marriage and thus is a fine gift for either or both of a wedded pair, especially so on their wedding day. So I, I think that's really freaking cool. Um, that makes a really cool... I think that's a... I, I'm personally one of those kind of people who don't like boring... The same old... God, cliche, yeah. diamond... I don't even have a diamond ring, okay? I don't. I'm very, very fucking picky about that shit. And I don't want a regular ring like that ever, you know? I just don't. I'm very... I don't know. I like... I'd rather have like a Moldavite or something. I don't know. I just don't... I don't... I'd rather have it's some rare unique. Tektite, you know, or something. Yeah. I don't want... That came from outer space, you know? I'd rather have that on my finger. Yeah, that's more impressive. Again, yeah. di people think that diamonds are rare. Diamonds are not rare. No, they're Diamonds beautiful. are very common. They're very pretty, but I think, I mean, an aquamarine with, like, diamonds and stuff around it with something else, maybe moonstones with it or something. Moonstones so or peridot. Peridot looks really nice with aquamarine. So, yeah. So then um, another one underneath it, I'm going to go ahead and read it because that wasn't yeah. really short, is the Elf Shot Love Amulet. <laughs> okay, now I love this one. Uh, these are flint arrowheads and said to be a love charm for winning the affection of the one desired. This belief comes uh, this belief comes from Europe where flint arrowheads were believed to be the work of fairy workers. Representatives of Cupid and his arrow that binds two lovers together should uh, should be used in pairs with each party carrying an elf shot with the other lover's name written or engraved on it. And you got to wonder, because those are like, you know, they found these like ancient arrowheads that were all over the place. And mm -hmm. back then they thought, oh, they're from elves or, or fae or whatever. It's like, you got to wonder how they even got there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Where did they come from? I mean, I think that's, I think that's a really cool one. I, I thought that was pretty rad. So the last one I got in this book here is Fairy Lavender Love Gift. So the helpful flower fairies can add fragrance. 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 Mowage. Fragrance. Mowage is, is what brings us, us together, together today. today. <laughs> God damn it. Um, let's try that again. Love. True love. love. <laughs> Uh, the helpful flower fairies can add fragrance. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh my god. Her face. 
face is purple. <laughs> Oh my god, holy shit. Oh, what was in that gnocchi we had? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay. 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 <laughs> Take three. I'm not trying to say it again. Okay. <laughs> we, we get. <laughs> god damn. What is with you? <laughs> oh god. Okay. Sorry, folks. Technical okay. difficulties. <laughs> god, I wish we I wish that you guys could see what was happening here. Oh my god. Okay. okay, okay, okay. In the future okay. we'll have cameras set okay. up, but we're not ready for that yet. <sighs> Alright. So that word and then beauty to your love life. Flower fairies are probably the easiest to commune with as you just need some living flowers. Lavender is a fairy favorite of the winged and garden fairies. It is well known for its magical properties of love, devotion, peaceful dreams, harmony, and protection from neg negativity. Make this love gift on a Friday Again. or are just before a full moon. So a pot of la what you're going to need is a pot of lav Jeez. lavender or a lavender bush. <laughs> oh shit i almost just spit water yes, all over them. Did. oh that was great <laughs> anyway so a pot of lavender or a lavender, lavender bush, bush one half cup dried lavender lavender essential oil a white pouch two 12 inch pieces of lavender ribbon a book of love poems, a book, uh, a bottle of champagne or sparkling cider. So draw your fairy ring around a living lavender bush outside or a pot of lavender. Then draw a fairy circle and call in the fairy guardians. Ask the lavender plant for six sprigs and then snip them off. Thank the plant and set the sprigs aside. Put the dried lavender in the pouch and add six drops of lavender oil to the pouch. Close the pouch and tie it with one of the pieces of lavender ribbon. Knot the ends three times. With each knot you tie, you say, I empower these flowers with love, devotion, and harmony. By the flower fairies, blessed be. Now tie the other piece of ribbon around the sprigs of fresh lavender. Hold the tied lavender in your power hand and repeat, I empower these flowers with love, devotion, and harmony. By the flower fairies, blessed be. Put the tied lavender into the book of love poems. Use the lavender bouquet to mark a favorite poem, one that you want your beloved to read first. When you are done, thank the flower fairies, bid farewell to the fairy guardians, and close the circle. That night, give your lover the book of poems with the lavender sprigs tucked inside, plus the bottle of bubbly to be shared with your beloved as a love gift. Put the pouch under your bed or tuck it into your pillowcase. Also, anoint yourself with the lavender oil and rub your wood furniture with a few drops, especially your bed, beside bed table and bedroom dresser to promote loving dreams and blissful romantic nights. Mm -hmm. And that is that. <laughs> okay. All right. So the thing I have marked here is the black pullet love charm, which I think was really trippy. There is an actual picture here, so I will put it up on the Instagram stuff. Whoa, I almost just knocked out my thing. Um, hold on, I'm marking it. Um, this unusual charm, unusual in that it uses an occult symbolism that is unique and unlike any other system, which I find fascinating, you guys, is engraved on silver or gold, cast from a mold, or embroidered in silver on black satin. The latter is difficult to come by these days as a rare skill is required for such embroidering. Low priced rings with this design are easy to come by, apparently. I've never seen one, but whatevs. Um, according to the book in which the charm is described, various magical words must be spoken in order to gain the power, which is to give the love and willingness of the beloved. The charm is placed on the table, on a table, and the ring 
worn on the middle finger of the left hand is presented to the lips. Which lips? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> no, seriously though, um, that's interesting that it's uh, worn on the middle finger of the left hand. The middle finger is the Saturn finger, which I find fascinating. <laughs> mm-hmm. I always wear rings on my Saturn finger because that is like the most powerful planet in my natal chart because of where it's sitting. I don't. Um, At least not yet. So three magical words of evocation, evocation are spoken. Nadis, Serratis, Manie. Man, man, maniner, I think is how you say it. I'm, I'm going to take a picture. You guys can look at it yourself. Um, these arouse a spirit who is bound to bring about the desired results. To cause this action, the words Seder, Prostas, Prostas, Solaster must be said. If there is a change of heart in the part of the charm user, then the love can be stopped by saying Mamis Lahar. Whatever. <laughs> okay. This Better charm is, de- is trying to say fragrant. <laughs> fragrance. Say fragrance. <laughs> this charm is described along with many other magical talismans in the 18th century book called The Black Pullet. Or to quote from it, the hen with the golden eggs. Being the science of magical talismans and rings, the art of the Kabbalah for the conjuration of aerial and infernal spirits of slifts, undines, and gnomes. <laughs> well, fuck. <laughs> gnomes. I know. And so on. Uh, though a long list of magical accomplishments to be realized through the use of this book. Okay, so there's like a bunch of different shit in this book. I'd like to actually look at this book. Mm-hmm. I wonder if I can find a copy of it. Mm. I, I should Google it yeah, or look on Amazon and see if they actually carry a, a reprint. All of the magical accomplishments to be realized throughout the book. Okay. All, okay. all of the book's secrets uh, were claimed by the author to have been given to him by a mysterious magician known as the Old Man or Sage of the Pyramids. Hmm. Really now. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Oh. Okie dokie. Hold on, I'm passing this off to Ciara here. Okay, so it's this one. Yeah, okay. Let's see what I'll butcher (laughs) pronounce-wise. So, fire spell to keep a band faithful. Oh, boy. So, the fire spell is an ancient, strange custom of old Greece. Funny that this is the one you hand to me. That still prevails to this day. Some women who have been fearful of losing their husband or lover have resorted to this spell as described by Theocritus. Theocritus? Blech. Uh, Anyway, step one. Take a little barley meal and sprinkle it over a burning piece of charcoal laid in a small pan or metal container. When the barley is burned, sprinkle bay leaf on the charcoal. Make a wax figure of a man, mark the name of the man on it, and then burn it until all melted. Sprinkle uh, bran on the charcoal. Take a piece of cloth cut from the lover's clothes and burn it. Burn some herbs such as basil, sandalwood, or other sweet-smelling botanicals. These also might be aureus, lavender, or myrrh. While burning the various ingredients, it is well to speak the following incantation or something similar. As I invoke this spell of fire, let, insert man's name, be ever bound onto me. Let this love be mine eternal. After all the material have been burned and the ashes are gathered together and mixed with a small amount of food oil, this is then mixed with some of the warm melted wax. If necessary, remelt the wax. Form the wax miniature into a crown. Rub this crown on the man's clothing or onto or upon his skin. Now the fire spell mark is upon him and the ritual is complete. Fascinating. Interesting. So, you guys, just for, for reference, I did look up that book. You can get it on Amazon. They do have it. <laughs> it's fascinating. Um, it's funny that I've never, like, really come across this one, though. I guess it just, you know, wasn't... Uh, it's it's written by Anonymous. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It says Anonymous is the author. Well, well, well. Then I'm definitely going to get it. <laughs> just to, you know... Because I'm, I'm expanding my collection of books and stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, this is this is an interesting little read here. I can't believe I haven't come across this before. 
I'm surprised. I mean, I've seen all kinds of other shit, but not this, which is fascinating. So I'm totally putting that in my cart. <laughs> Anyhow, okay, so um, where was I? So I'm not going to do that one because this is too long. Okay, incenses as magical charms. The use of incense for occult rituals dates back to pre-biblical days and is specifically mentioned in the Bible wherein a divine command is made to burn incense. Basically, it is offered as a petition and a medium for prayer. Various ingredients result in a multitude of aromas, obviously, and the many varieties available represent human desires and needs. An incense can be any botanical by itself, such as the well-known frankincense, myrrh, or sandalwood, or it can be a mixture of a few or many ingredients. In many cases, a name will be given to a mixture that represents the impression received by its maker upon burning it. For instance, an incense delineated as a lover's incense evidently has some quality that creates a mood remindful of romance. Such incenses are burned in the belief that when uh, that what they represent will come shall come to pass. It is this context that they would be classified as magical charms. So yeah, for those of you, I mean, that's what incense is. It's always been used for prayers and things and, you know, sacred stuff. And speaking of that, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to open up this book because I have some, where is it? That's powders. I have some actually marked in this book here where it's an incense. Um, that's a bath. There's so many cool things in here. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me find the incense one. That's an oil. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Did I mark the incenses or what? Yes. Okay. So here's a good one. Since all the stuff CR has been reading is having to do with Friday and Venus rules Friday. So <clears throat> a Venus incense would be three parts wood aloe, one part red rose petals, one pinch of crust, uh, crushed red coral, optional. A few drops of olive oil, a few drops of musk oil, and a few drops of ambergris oil. Mix well and burn for Venusian influences such as love, healing, partnerships, and rituals involving women. The inclusion of coral in this recipe dates to about the 16th century when coral was considered to be a powerful love stimulant. Now we know that coral is the skeleton of a living creature. It is best to omit it entirely. Exactly. Mm. And coral is like, you know, dangerously, you know, becoming mm, more and more. It's ex- dying. Yeah, it's dying off and it's becoming extinct. So, and if you've ever snorkeled or scuba dived in a coral reef, it's so fucking beautiful. And the thought that that is disappearing and dying just makes me just sick to my stomach because it's an actual... It's part of the habitat, you know, of ocean sea life. And I mean, the fish around it. I mean, the most beautiful fish that I've seen. I've seen a shit ton in Hawaii, but I saw, I think the fish in Florida down in like the Keys is, are just stunning, like near Sombrero Reef and stuff. It's really beautiful. So there's another love incense here. That's a true love incense, which is one part cinnamon, one part orris. And a few drops of patchouli oil and you burn that for love. That's like a real simple one. So basically you can create your own love incenses and anything that you want. <clears throat> you know, you can use flowers that mean something to you. You can use like dried jasmine or uh, rose rose petals. Um, what else? What's a good one? Well, here's, a, here's another love incense right here. It's two parts dragon's blood, one part orris, Half part cinnamon, half part rose petals, a few drops of musk, and a few drops of patchouli. So, um, and then the other one is two parts sandalwood, half part basil, half part bergamot, a few drops of rose oil, and then a few drops of lavender oil. Just like when it comes to making an incense, just, um, I think it's most powerful when it means the most to you. Kind yeah. of, you know, like whatever the ingredients are that you're using. Um, like here's an Aphrodite one. That's a part cinnamon, a part cedar, and a few drops of cypress oil. And then you burn that during rituals designed to attract love to you. Um, but there's, you know, all different types of ingredients. And what you do is you can like 
mix up your own. You get a little like uh, cauldron, like a little, um, there's different sizes. And then you put the charcoal in there and then you put your incense on top of that. And you know, you burn your own incense. I have a bunch of herbs that we grew over the summer that are dried upstairs and I still have yet to get a new like because we used to have a little um, burner for it but it got lost in one of our moves so I need to get a new one really bad yep. so I can burn those so anyway um what else do we have here <clears throat> okay here try this one Sierra down here the pink one right here yep. all right what do we got here Solomon seal magical charm. The Bible states that King Solomon had wisdom surpassing all other men and that it was conferred upon him by the Lord. According to the book of Proverbs, he had a tremendous knowledge of the natural sciences as well as theology and philosophy. Also, the tradition of his being a master among magicians goes back to a very remote antiquity. In extremely ancient uh, Persian literature, Solomon, what, what, whatever, or Solomon, son of David, was the most powerful <clears throat> of all men who commanded all the spirits of heaven, earth, and hell. A very important part of his power was said to lie in his seal. The design which was shown here, one ancient legend says that if a person holds a replica of the star while saying Solomon's words of power, Lofham Malfon, then their wish shall be granted. The small golden charm has the six-point star of Solomon on one side. The reverse side is covered with magical symbols. Hmm. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat is just driving me nuts right now. So, um, I wonder if I should take a picture of this one and put it in there. What do you think? Yeah, you can. I mean, you can buy this. I yeah, see it's this. it's not hard to find that. No, not at all. So, <clears throat> there's another, I have to post this too. There's like a general citation in here for uh, this citation or conjuration, as it would be called today, applies to the fourth seal and the ninth table, the spirits of Venus, which is something I uh, read earlier. So, and the other podcast. So, um... There's a bunch of stuff written here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a shot of this and also put it up in the thing so you guys can look at it. Um, because there's this is a long one, and there's a bunch of names in here that are, you know, <clears throat> the oh, well, a lot of them are angels that I recognize. Um, and then it's, it's calling on Elohim, you know, um, and all kinds of stuff. So you guys can take a look at that yourself. I'm not going to sit here and read it all out. Um, and then here is one. Ooh, there's a there's a there's a a basic layout that's shown here and a map of something in here. So, um, like how to set up a your altar for this spell here, and <laughs> this is an old one. <laughs> yep. Okay. So this is to make a man love you, basically. And this is an old voodoo spell calculated to make a man love only you. You must obtain or make two wax images or candles. Either form will do. Both figures are to be made with red wax. One is that of a man and the other is the shape of a wolf. Mm. Interesting. At midnight on a Saturday, which is a Saturn's day, okay, um, you will take dirt from a grave and place it in a red flannel black bag. This is so fucking rad. This is so old school voodoo. Yeah, it is. Uh, take this home and hide it for seven days. During this time, prepare an altar as follows in the diagram below. An altar can be any small table. Place upon the chosen surface an altar cloth, which in this instance should be at least one foot wide and two feet long. A larger altar cloth is perfectly all right, but try not to use the smaller sizes. It may get overcrowded. So it shows you like how to lay it out here. It says on the altar is placed as shown. And so it shows, you know, the different stuff. There's a altar candle, a burner, a basil, altar candle, love can lover candle, see, there's two lover candles. There's the man candle. 
there's a wolf candle that's seven inches exactly from the man candle, which is, this is so cool. There's a Bible, a paper heart, uh, hairs, etc., and then two different oils. And then like it tells you what goes where, and there's like a list. The ritual begins at midnight on the seventh day, which is following is the following Saturday. Light the two altar candles. Use a wooden taper to light all candles. Chant aloud the following, thinking of the man while you speak. And I'm not going to chant this, and I'm not going to read it out loud, because I ain't trying to conjure up some man to love me, all right? But um, it's, it's totally, when I look at it, it's very much Creole, mm. okay? <laughs> When you're looking at it, uh, I mean, I love it. I love the way that sounds. Yeah. I just do. Okay. It says, and it says here, do not worry about the pronunciation. It is the symbolism and the intent that matters. Say the words as they appear to you. Um, and I can totally, I, it's so weird when I'm looking at this, I'm like getting tripped out. It's almost like deja vu when I'm looking at it, which kind of creeps me out a little bit, but, um, and it's also making me smile really bad. Uh, which I find fascinating, okay? So basically you end up anointing the man candle with the two love candles and the two love candles with lover's oil. Always anoint a candle starting in the middle. Rub on the oil from the middle towards the top and then more oil from the middle to the bottom. This is the system of anointing that is used in all forms of rituals involving candles regardless of the type of magic, be it voodoo or other. Put some basil leaf in the burner and ignite. This is your incense offering to the voodoo goddess of love, uh, Urzuli, I think is how you say her name. Uh, sorry if I butchered that, anybody. Um, to invoke her aid. Anoint the wolf candle with the compelling oil. Put something belonging to the man or his picture on the heart. Light the lover's man, the lover's man and wolf candle. Move the wolf candle one inch towards the man candle and allow to burn for 30 minutes. At the end of 30 minutes, put out all the candles. Repeat this ritual every night until the wolf candle touches the man candle. That's why you, that, that is very specific. That is amazing. This takes seven nights as the wolf candle is to be seven inches away at the start. On the eighth night, remove the man and wolf candles from the altar and burn them completely in a furnace or open fire. The ritual is now finished. Hmm. Note, the Bible is considered to be of great help and is always kept on the altar during voodoo candle rituals. Fascinating. For convenience, all listed articles are shown placed on the altar. However, the experienced initiate will have a supply cabinet or shelves for various oils, herbs, incenses, candles, etc. This is only important when a number of rituals are tied for different... Okay, whatever. So <clears throat> you can buy all those oils already pre-made, by the way. Like, it's really easy to get the voodoo oils and stuff. It's not hard. I mean, I was just in a place the other day uh, in Maryland where... Um, she had all that in there. I mean, yeah. she, that, that store is so rad. By the way, the store is called the Crystal Fox. It's fucking awesome. I love that place. Okay, here you go, Sierra. Blue right down there. I spent quite a lot of money in there. Oh, yeah, she did. She <laughs> dropped a couple hundo in there. I did. <laughs> okay, so we have Slavic Love Charm. As simple as this charm might appear, the mechanics of it are not too easy to achieve in this day of urban living. A woman must dig up the earth in which the man she desire, desires has left a footprint. The first order of business is to find such a spot. If a garden is available with some fresh, soft dirt, thoughtfully sprinkled uh, judis, judis, judiciously, if I can't say that word, <laughs> might solve the problem. Otherwise, some lake or ocean beach or woodland path may, be, may do. Once the dirt is gathered, it is put into a flower pot and a marigold is planted in it. As grows the flower, so grows the man's love. I love that one. I think it's really cool. It um, is. It's very unique. Okay. So what do we got going on here? So we have to make a wife desire. Oh, wait. Hold on. Okay, no, there's two. Th all right, I've, I've highlighted three things here, so they're mm -hmm. quick. A charm to make a woman frigid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why would you want to do that? But whatever. Obtain wolf hair and burn it to ashes because it's so easy, easy to, to go out and get, get some wolf fucking wolf hair. hair, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. 
Mix it into a drink to be offered to her. Upon drinking it, she will lose all sexual desire or she'll get a very bad hairball. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> this charm has been noted in various old books of magic with essentially the same mode of operation privy to all of them. The directions differ among them in that the wolf's hair comes from varying parts of the body. Oh, God. Evidently, only trial and error would determine which is the correct area from whence the hair should be taken. So I, I, they don't list it, like what parts of the body of the wolf that they take the hair from, but I can imagine a few. So, um, and then here's one. To make a wife desire only her husband. In such sad instance of a woman desiring men other than her husband. <laughs> Yeah, maybe if he wasn't an asshole, she wouldn't desire somebody else, right? So Albertus Magnus recommended that the husband obtain tallow derived from a male goat. This tallow was to be applied to the genital area of the husband and intercourse was to immediately follow. From that time on, the woman would not want any other man. By putting goat fat on his dick, that's going to make so. her want him. I wonder what that smelled like. Gross. And I'm sorry, but whenever I see the word tallow and I think of goat, it makes me think of Rosemary's baby. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Anyway. So, uh, last one here is the goddess Fortuna, a stature, a statue or picture of this powerful goddess is well to keep in the home as she is said to have the power of keeping alive a husband's love for his wife. She was both a Roman and Greek goddess. Uh, what is her freaking Greek name? I have never heard this one. T-Y-C-H-E. How do you say that? It's Greek. It's not Teichi? Teish? I, I'm not sure. Tichi. I, I have no idea. If there's any Greek people out there, please fill us in <laughs> i honestly have no, i've heard of fortuna a million times oh, yeah. but never that that's interesting okay so anyway moving right along here we have this one right here so this next one is a myrtle potion the use of myrtle as a love potion dates back at least to the ancient greeks Properly prepared, myrtle does have stimulating properties of some sorts. These are brought out with alcohol. Since <laughs> Everything is brought out with alcohol. Since the pure alcohol is difficult to obtain from the layman, gin or vodka will do. Mix four ounces of powdered myrtle with four ounces of distilled water and 12 ounces of gin or vodka. <laughs> Stir or shake very thoroughly. Do this mixing in a glass or porcelain container that has a cover or closure. If necessary, use a saucer or some kind of lid as a cover. Allow the potion to steep for two weeks in a dark place away from the sun. A cupboard will do very well. After the two weeks, slowly pour the liquid into a bottle, and it is now ready for use. The myrtle potion has been used in several ways. Mixed with other beverages or liqueurs, mixed with foods, and mixed with other love potions to allegedly give them more strength. Interesting. And getting you really buzzed at the same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. 12 ounces of gin yeah. or vodka. Or There's use no some wonder. 151 in it. Yeah, exactly. Some fire water. Okay. So, next up we have the making of potions. In many instances, a potion is simply made by adding the required ingredient or ingredients to a liqueur or beverage. However, there are times when it is necessary or more convenient to have a supply of a potion that can be stored for use, such as occurs with the myrtle potion. <laughs> there is a number of methods to be used. The choice of method will depend on the botanical used and how long the potion is to be stored for future use. A, for a potion that is to be made quickly and used the same day, put about a half ounce of the herb in a pint of water and bring it to a boil. Some prefer to pour boiling water over the herb. Either way, let the potion cool. Do not heat any further. It is now ready for use. Use the same day or night and throw away any leftover. It will lose its strength within 18 hours. So basically, it's like a tea. Um, B, Use the method described in making the myrtle potion, which we just said. 
C. Mix about a half ounce of an herbal essential or compound oil with either alcohol, gin, or vodka. Use a half a pint of the liquid of your choice. And then if it is alcohol, only pure grain alcohol will do. Ask your local stealer. <laughs> uh, this mixture will keep indefinitely. Yeah, no shit. It's preserved in pure fucking alcohol. <laughs> okay, D. Put about an ounce of the herb, root, bark, berry, or seed, depending on what is called for, in a pint of water and bring it to a boil. If you have used some botanical that is hard, such as a root, try to break it up a bit by hitting it with a hammer and boil it for about 15 minutes. With, this, with softer material, five minutes is enough. Now add one ounce of glycerin. Stir in the mixture and let it stand until cool. Then pour into a bottle and store in a cool place. It is easy to obtain glycerin at any drugstore. You want food grade if you're going to eat it. Mm. Um, and, you, you know, you can obtain that through Amazon. Okay? So, um, here we go, Sierra. Oh, I, if you see here that's going on right there we're almost done with this book so all of that where it's where it's marked yeah so we have the oh boy minute minute love charm an egyptian charm thousands of years old worn to promote happiness and love and to preserve sexual desire an amulet could be made of metal or could be drawn on parchment if necessary but metal is considered the best the amulet was worn by various Egyptian gods and goddesses, including Hathor, Isis, and Osiris. Padlock and key. These mundane objects have a definite... There's a lock. There has, has to, to be, be a, a key. key. <laughs> uh, these mundane objects have a definite... Definitive... No, definite. Love symbolism oh, is worn as part of a charm bracelet. The padlock means that the giver has gained the love of the wearer, and likewise the key has unlocked the heart. A further bonus is the Chinese belief that the padlock confers long life, health, and happiness. Truly a great deal so uh, deal from so little. Love Potion. Obtain some hair from the woman desired without her being aware of it being taken. Shit. This should be done on Friday, the day of Venus. Keep this hair well hidden until the next Friday. At sunrise of that day, write her name and your own on a parchment paper using as ink some blood drawing from the third finger of your left hand. After the writing is done, the parchment and hair is burned to ashes. Some of the ashes must be introduced into the woman's food or drink, and when she has embedded embedded she will be smitten with you according to this old european tale the stone of love the amethyst is a rarity that it has no detrimental or unpleasant effects credited to it in all the magical lore regarding stones and gems there is only it is only good to be found regarding the amethyst in this favorite stone used in religious jewelry particularly being set in rings According to tradition, St. Valentine wore the amethyst at all times. Um, Pliny, Pliny, Pliny. Pliny states that if the symbols of the sun and moon are engraved on it, it becomes the most beneficial of all stones. For sweetheart, it is considered the most fortunate of all gifts to give to one another. The common usages of amethyst would be in setting of rings, pendants, and earrings. Caduceus charm. Secure this sign engraved on silver or gold and you will have a powerful talisman for healing quarrels and bringing lovers together. This is the wand of Mercury, the rod of healing and peace. Apollo gave Mercury the original staff and wings and the serpents were added when Mercury used the staff to stop a deadly battle between two of them. Apollo decreed that everyone carrying the symbol would be able to bend others to his will. Mm. fascinating okay and I think that that had some stuff that like a picture right yeah I had a couple that, that needs to be added to Instagram um yes I'm marking oh shit all of them as I go along here um so true lovers not okay <laughs> as in not like as in you tie a knot mm hmm yes I, I like the knot tying. <laughs> okay. 
An ancient rune design that can be found on a love amulet, which is carried as a magical charm to bring love to its bearer. Such a knot is actually to be tied in the following... In following an old description of its use, some piece of clothing, and it can be a small piece, just so there is enough to get a thread long enough, uh, long enough to form the knot. The thread is looped into the form shown here, and when it is finished, the following is spoken. Three times a true love's knot I tie secure. Firm be the knot, firm may his love endure. So, yeah, and I'll show the picture on Instagram. So next up we have Moonstone. Okay, how many people out there have Moonstones? I do. I do. I mean, I think every freaking decent witch out there has a freaking Moonstone, damn it. So Moonstone is said to be a most wonderful love talisman, which should always be kept wrapped in yellow cloth when it is not being carried or worn. Mm. It is believed to arouse love and reconcile lovers. In such instance as there being difficulties between two lovers, one should take the, init uh, the initiative and present the other with a moonstone wrapped in yellow cloth. In addition, this beautiful stone is credited with giving lovers the power to see the future as regards to them. In order to do this, one had only placed the stone in one's mouth at the time of a full moon and concentrate on the other lover. Wow. Hmm. I think that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay so john the conqueror root love charm in american voodoo lore john the conqueror root is one of the most famous botanicals of all it has been used in various rituals connected with the search for good luck in gambling business and money matters and also as a love amulet one of its voodoo uses calls for a nine-day ritual if one party is not showing enough affection, the ritual starts with placing half of a grapefruit in a pan. Salt, sugar, pepper, and Epsom salts are sprinkled on the grapefruit. The desired person's name is written on a piece of paper, and the paper is rolled into a tight shaft that can be inserted into the grapefruit. <laughs> Nine candles are set around the pan and lit. Pink or red is usually considered the best color for voodoo candles for love rituals. While the candles are burning, the John the Conqueror root is rubbed in the hands while circling around the candles. All the time of, uh, all the time of circling the other party must be thought of and wished for. This ritual must be followed for nine days. Nine minutes of circling is felt to be adequate for each night. That's interesting. And the last one on this page is Gypsy Love Charm. Um, okay, so this one is kind of, I think I, I made a note here. Talk about this, but warn about the bird. Oh, <laughs> okay, so this one is kind of like vicious. So mm. to gain the love of a man, secure pimento, the yolk of a chicken egg, and the blood of a white pigeon. Yeah, I ain't going to do that. Okay, I, I don't know. Just no, no. Vegans everywhere get this. No. <laughs> Put these in a glass bottle of small size. Sew the bottle into a bag and cast the bag into the sea. Okay, now we're going to pollute the sea here. Okay. <laughs> uh, no doubt the charm should work as well if the sea is too far away and a lake or river is handy. <laughs> Fucking A. Upon casting forth the bag, the magical gypsy word Yanaheim must be repeated 33 times while thinking of the man desired. Okay, don't do this. <laughs> Just don't. All right. It, not only are you throwing shit into waterways, but you're hurting animals. Not cool. I mean, can you see? This is, this is the history. All right. We're not promoting this. This is like shit people used to do. All right. So, um, next up. Ciara, this top one, and then I'll do this. Okay? okay, you do the top. So we got love charm. Obtain three hairs from the head of the beloved. With fresh wax, fashion a candle, and as the wax is poured, place the hairs within it. Also within the candle, and it can be used as the wick, is placed a thread spun by a virgin on Friday, the day of <laughs> Venus. Okay. I love this historical shit. Uh, the candle could be any shape, so any small disposable <clears throat> container can be used as a mold. The thread or wick is fastened to the bottom with a piece of clay. 
lay a small stick across the top of the container and tie the top of the wick to it. Since it's a medieval love charm, of course it is. It has to do with virgins. I know, no shit. A s- <laughs> spun thread, as described, was probably easy to come by in those days. Today it might be difficult to obtain. However, every crude spinning is adequate, and only the virginity and correct day is further needed. No in so not in so in surmountable the when the candle is finished write the name of the beloved on it with the blood of a sparrow and burn the candle completely the charm is now complete repeat if necessary jesus they just like hacked up animals a lot Mm -hmm. okay gypsy acorn charm and the fact that they're using the word gypsy okay here just proves how old this shit is because we don't use that word these days so, um, to bring back an absent lover, a woman must obtain an oak twig or small branch with an acorn attached and a few twigs of ash. These are put under her pillow and left there for three nights. Each night upon retiring, she says, acorn cup and ashen key bid my true love come to me between moonlight and firelight. Bring him over the hills tonight. Over the meadows, over the moor, over the rivers, over the sea, over the threshold, and in in at the door, acorn cup and ashen key, bring my true love back to me. Okay, then. It's so poetic and shit. All right, and then the last one here on this page is ginseng. Okay. Among the hundreds of millions of Chinese, the uh, ginseng root has been... It has the highest of esteem for its medicinal value and aphrodisiacal power. In powder form, the Chinese sprinkle it on their food as a precaution against the multitude of ills. However, its greater fame lies with it being a sexual stimulant. Used in this manner, a very tiny amount is deemed necessary to imbue before retiring. No doubt, the amount used would vary with the individual results with the individual results so only experimentation could tell what is needed ginseng is an expensive botanical and its cost could prevent uh wholesale testing i don't know if that's the case these days though i do know from um a source i'm not going to say who it is that a lot of the shit that they sell here in america is crap when it comes mm-hmm. to herbs. Seriously, you guys, you want to grow your own whenever you can because the potency of the stuff that they you know, sell you here in the United States is garbage. You literally have to know who to get it from to get the good stuff. Seriously, okay? An oddity about ginseng is, although it is greatly valued and used in the Orient, it has never been so accepted in the West. Bullshit. This, okay, keep in mind, guys, this book was written in, well, this, it was written a long time ago, but this particular one that I have here was printed in 1972. So, yeah. Um, It's never been so accepted in the West. Its value as an aphrodisiac or medicine has been questioned by European and American doctors. Yet its popularity grows even in those areas of the globe. Its botanical name is Panax uh, quinquifolium. And it is also called Chinese seng, seng root and ninson, I think. The best quality roots come from Korea. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So... Anyway, here you go, CR. Wait, hold on. Let me uh, mark this one. I thought that was interesting. And it's like so much has changed over the years since this was written clearly on many levels. <laughs> Which am I in my reading? The, let me see. That. Um, All of those ones right there? Wh- which? Yeah. At least three of them. We're almost done. All right, to gain a woman's love, secure feathers from a live rooster's tail and press them three times into her hand. (laughs) Yes, come up to... (laughs) I am just going to stop right there. (laughs) Yes, press cock feathers into her. (laughs) I was going to even just omit the feather part. (laughs) Anyway, to gain a woman's love... Hold a... <laughs> what? 
hold a turtle dove tongue in your mouth Ew. while you kiss your beloved and she will love you dearly. Ew! No, she ain't. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking gross. Where do they get these fucking ideas? I don't fucking know. Um, I love talisman. This talisman should be drawn in red ink or genuine parchment. On genuine parchment. On a Friday, the day of Venus. The Latin words around the circle are... Not gonna... Uh, hoc... Hoc est... Den... Enem os de... Os... I'm... Uh, no. I'm not, <laughs> no. This means... This is now bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and they shall be one flesh. Wow. This talisman was to be kept close at hand... Uh, when wanting the love of a woman. I love how the next one just says, like, what the fuck in your handwriting above it. <laughs> I wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, the one below that one just says lulls. <laughs> so the one that says, like, what the fuck is love charm. Said to be a most powerful love charm, but difficult to obtain. A needle that has been struck into a corpse must be covered with graveyard dirt and then wrapped in a piece of cloth cut from a dead man's winding sheet. Ew. The woman who possesses this charm is said to always have success in love affairs. And eh. Okay, whatever. Uh, next one is love charm. Said to come from Africa, this charm is made to cause a woman to give her love to the man who has made it first. First, the in ingredients must be assembled and they can be procured from curio or herb shops or from mail order firms. Uh, a small gourd, uh, one, a one, one fourth ounce coconut oil, tree of life chips, also called thuja, myrtle leaves, and a feather. Concentrate on the woman desired. Pour the coconut oil on the ground. Or the, on the gourd, excuse me. Mix some Tree of Life chips and myrtle leaves into a mortar and grind them to a powder. Put this powder and some hair from beneath the arms into the gourd <laughs> and fill the gourd with water. <laughs> Tie a string securely about the gourd and hang it high. After ten days, take the gourd down and insert the feather into it. Uh, point down. Use the charm. A day or night must be chosen when no work with the hands is necessary. Concentrate on the woman. You remove the feather from the gourd and wipe the liquid on it, on it, onto your hands. This liquid is then wiped on the face. Ew. The hands or face must not be washed, nor the liquid be rubbed off in any fashion. Ugh. Thus prepared, approach the woman and gently take <laughs> hold of her shoulders and run your hands down her arms. Ew. Tell her you love her, and if the charm <laughs> works, she will return your passion. For the time, from the time your hands are, are anointed until the woman's arms are touched, your hands should not touch one another. That is, yeah, and I bet you smell nasty fucking ripe and shit. Yeah, that's I, I just, nasty. That, just oh, gross. yes, the woman's going to turn around and say she just loves like, you. And you're all like oily and shit. Yeah, that's like, like, <laughs> like, I'm just picturing some oily dude like sneaking up on a woman wanting to touch her shoulders. And I'm just like, get the fuck no. away. Seriously. No. Oh, my God god that's horrifying okay so guys we only have two more to go here so the divine messenger uh, an appellation of alan kardec a famous french spiritualist he claimed to have been reincarnated and to be the messenger of certain heavenly powers thought by some to be a divine prophet his image became part of a talisman on the reverse side of the talisman is the figure of the red dragon. Also used, uh, the, also used with the medallion is a miniature sword of St. Michael in order to invoke the aid of the talisman in matters of love, good fortune, and conquest of all troubles. An evening hour would be selected, preferably at dusk. Touch the image of Alan Kardec uh, and say three times, Alan, favor Alan. Uh, the talisman is turned over and one lips press one's lips pressed to the red dragon. The medallion is laid with the dragon face up and the sword of St. Michael is laid across it. And these words are spoken with this St. Michael sword. I cover thee and turn to thy power. 
The talisman and sword are then placed on the person and carried in the pocket or on a neck chain. I thought that was mm. very interesting. I mean, whenever I think of Red Dragon, I think of the movie Red Dragon. <laughs> and also um, the picture of the... It's in... He has it tattooed on him in the movie. I can't remember who the... Oh, I'm brain farting right now. You know, You guys know what I mean. Okay. So the seal of the sun talisman. The center of our solar system, the sun affects every zodiac sign. Astrologically, it controls our individuality and stands for faithfulness, among other things. If the talisman was to be used to assure the steadfast love of another, it was given as a gift to that person. This was always done on a Sunday and the day, the day of the sun, obviously. If the desired effect was for oneself, uh, then the talisman was carried or worn beginning on a Sunday. This would be for the purpose of strengthening one's intelligence or receiving favors or gaining a position of honor or helping to make a decision. And so there, there's like a little picture of what it looks like right here. I'll take a picture. And then uh, the seal of Venus. Okay, since we've been talking about Venus and Friday this whole entire time, I thought it would be appropriate to do this. So um, the seal of Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. Venus rules art and artists, music, poetry, love, marriage, acting, and actors. Um, the ancients had the firm belief that the seal or talisman of Venus should be in their possession when visiting or receiving their beloved. At a time of proposal of marriage or at a wedding ceremony, this talisman was always used to in, induce love and affection when it appeared not to exist and to promote peace and harmony. And so there's like a little picture of it. And I believe that is a bull on there, which makes a lot of sense. So um, in the back here of this book, also, there's like a shit ton, like a list of all these different books that contain ritual spells and other fascinating material. And I'm going to take a picture of this and I'll put it up there too. This, this little pamphlet book thing is so old and it's dirty because it's been through a million freaking moves and just all over the place. So um, anyway, that was it for this run for um, sharing all these ancient and old historical love spells and ideas and things. So um, we hope you guys enjoyed it. And that you found it interesting because I sure found it, a lot of it funny as hell. Some of it not so funny. Um, some of it's rather disturbing, isn't it? So, <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, the oily guy is just creepy as hell. <laughs> I mean, and the tongue inside the mouth thing. It's that's like, disgusting. your tongue is enough. I don't need some other creature's tongue in there too. That's, that's just disgusting. like creepy as hell. Okay, guys. So, um, we hope you enjoyed this podcast. Um, Please take a look at our other videos that we have um, posted up on YouTube on both of our channels. We have a bunch of different things. Ciara just posted some crystal stuff and some artwork things that she just posted as well. Um, and if you were interested in getting a personal reading with the two of us, there is information on that. Um, you can contest contact us on Instagram or um, there's usually information in the drop down boxes about um, all of that. So thank you guys for joining us and we will catch you in the next podcast. Bye Take bye. Care. Bye.